Hi everyone, welcome to a new video for the custom shaped volume package and in this one we'll have a look at adding a volume to your level and what settings are there in the details panel. Now make uh, keep in mind that um, you can actually increase the play rate of a video on YouTube in case I'm going a little bit too slow for you. I'll also try to have a uh, uh, in, in the description at what point I talk about what. So first off, if you create your own volume with entering and leaving logic, of course you can add your own editable variables. So for sounds, we have sounds to play, max volume. For the post-process, we have post-process um, settings that are right here. And the town name, we have the town name. So if I open that, you can see editable variable right here. And you know, it works like any other blueprint. So you drag in a, uh, a post-process volume like we already had. And then you'll, you'll have all these settings in here. Now, post-process we just talked about. I'll go back to that a little bit later. Then we have visualize. Visualize is for both editor and game. So when I press play right now, there we go. That's our uh, volume visualize. You can turn on visualize fade and height. We'll do that for now. You won't see anything yet, but we'll get there. And then there is a pause all construction. Um, this is great for uh, for performance. So uh, if you're having some some editor performance issues because all these uh, construction scripts are being run uh, at at a point when you don't want them to run, you can turn them off. But make sure to uh, turn turn this on so to pause all construction script. But make sure to turn this off before you build, and maybe before you play as well. Because if if you have a lot of different volumes in your level and they all have to generate their meshes, it will cause a big lag spike when you play. So, you, But you can do all of that in the editor and prevent that lag spike from happening. You'll just have that once in the editor and then that's that. So uh, we'll use this actually in a little bit. Uh, let's just use it right now. So say we have the post-process uh, settings. We have the, uh, we, we wanna change the color grading white balance. Often you'll see a slider. So we have the temperature here. If I start dragging this slider, slider is actually constantly updating. So because it's constantly updating, it's also constantly running the constriction script. So if I start dragging this, you'll get a lag spike. Now there's two ways around this. You can either uh, fill the numbers in by hand, so I go, go zero, you'll see it's pretty much instant, right? B but you can also turn off the construction script and now it's just a slider, so maybe if you are going to be uh, playing around with this, uh, you might wanna uh, turn off the construction script for a little bit, play around with the values. So I'm gonna put this on, uh, let's put it on 1500, sure. And then turn it back on again. Uh, that's my alarm, sorry about that. Uh, so yeah, next up, we have the setup area where it has a fade range. Now, I already told you that I enabled that here. So basically, this in the post-process volume is used to gradually fade in the blend weight of the uh, post-process, so, so it's not instant. So if we were to play right now, go inside, boom, it's blue. Um, if we turn on a fade range to, let's say, 1500, you see that visualized right here. Let's drag our uh, player start out of there if it wants. It doesn't want. Okay. Listen, we'll just drag this away if that's how it has to be. So now when we approach, you can see it gradually go in, activate. That's what fade range is used for. So you don't always need that. Town names don't need that, uh, but audio does need that and also has it enabled by default. Next up, always check. This is actually part of uh, layering or you know if you do a custom setup always check just basically means should i always be checking if i am relevant now that that the check is optimized depending on distance and, and a few other um, things but you can turn it off and we'll talk about that a little bit later if you use layers um, next I'll use it uh, I'll talk about the spline precision so you see the spline and we have this mesh around it and maybe you have a very complicated area there's some weird turns and you can see the mesh starting to act a little bit strangely like this this could be an issue because um, you need to make sure that the mesh is always on that middle line basically so you can change the precision path from 0 to 1 and if I turn it on 1 going to be a bit more uh, performance heavy in the editor so to generate it 
there's no draw calls or anything um, uh, unless you have visualization on, of course. But uh, if you don't have that, which you generally shouldn't have, there's no draw calls or or shader complexity or or that stuff to worry about. Uh, so you can you can turn that up a little bit. But by default, I don't usually change this. I don't make these sort of strange shapes. But if you have a strange shape and you need that uh, for your game, you can turn on the precision a little bit. Uh, so yeah. Next up, we have the base, uh, the layers. So uh, a way to help you optimize this a little bit further is to add uh, layers. So say we have this outside area and let's go here. And then we have this post-process volume inside. So that's a volume inside a volume. So you have a town and maybe like a shed that's incredibly dark and opposite of the rest. Then we can use the layering system. You don't have to, but it's a nice way to help optimize. So what you need to do then is make sure they have the same name. So full capitalized town and town and set up a priority. Default to zero. This one will give a priority of one. That will also change the color. As you can see, it's now green. So that uh, if we turn off visualization here, red, green, that, that can help you uh, track which one's more important. And then we need to activate a base layer, but it's basically always checking already because um, always checking is enabled, but we could turn on base layer and disable always check. And on this one, also disable always check and not have a base layer. What does this do? When our player is right here, this one is never uh, you're never able to activate that one because if this one isn't activated yet, you know, if I'm not in this zone yet, then there's no reason this zone should be checking if I'm in, if I'm anywhere close to it. So you can pause this volume from updating if you're in a, uh, a, a f if you aren't in its parent volume yet. I hope that makes sense. If it doesn't, I'll, I'll record another video on it, but I hope it uh, <laughs> makes sense. I might be rambling a bit, I think. Um, so we have visualized fade, visualized height. Let's do a fade range of a thousand. Uh, this would this would be bad in this case because it overlaps the parent one. Um, so we have the fade range of a thousand. I'll turn on always check again. And you can use height. Now this makes it a true volume. Right now, if it's disabled, and I walk towards it, it's still going to change my scene. It's not because, you know, we didn't put in any settings. Uh, 1500. So I can just walk under it and it changes it. Inside, this is already seen as inside. But if we turn on height and give that a value, you can actually see what that does to it. So let's make it a smaller value. Let's do like 250. Let's put next to the stair. This uses numerous calculations, but this really turns it into a volume. So I can walk under it and as you can see, it goes a little bit because I'm in the, fa the fate range basically. Uh, but if I want to have the full effect, I need to be inside the volume and that's right here. So as you can see, as I drop down, I'm right underneath it, but it's not really at full strength yet. So for the, the height really is what makes, instead of like a, a 2D planes, what makes it a, a 3D volume that you have to keep in mind. I'm pretty sure that will make sense. Then we have the optimization update rate. Usually you set this on the child. So BP post-process example, I thought about what would be the fastest check interval 0.05 is, is fine for that. And uh, But you can make it faster if you want the fastest one to be uh, that. And the check rate, um, yeah, will make it check more often. So lower value e equals fewer checks. So if we have the town names, I mean, that's not really relevant, right? You can see it's check rates five and fastest check intervals two seconds. So, uh, yeah, that, which is absolutely fine for, for something like town names. Okay. I think that was the, the last one. Yeah. Tracking area, not really relevant for this one that's covered in another video, but you could, you could tweak it in the, uh, it's nice to have it tweakable in the level instance. Okay. I hope that, uh, that was clear. If not, uh, please let me know and I'll, I'll try to, to make it clearer. 
and maybe do a new video or something. All right, thank you so much for watching. If you en are enjoying the package, please leave a five star rating. It really helps um, people see that it's a good package. It helps me. It's also a very motivating and, and awesome for me to see all the, the, the kind words that people leave. And yeah, subscribe, join the Discord. That would be it for self-promotion. Best of luck with your projects and I'll see you next time.